All right, it is time to say goodbye to my tomato plants. So sad. Today we are going to cut out the tomato plants, pull them from the arch trellis and get ready for the next season. It's been such a fun time growing these tomatoes over the last few months, but just like any good thing, it has to come to an end. So let's dive into this video and take out these tomatoes and get ready for the cool season in the kitchen garden. Welcome to Gardenary. Garden plus ordinary equals Gardenary. Gardenary is here to make gardening an ordinary part of everybody's life once again. That includes you. So in the kitchen garden, we love talking about growing fruiting plants. It's like the third step or fourth step in terms of learning to grow in the kitchen garden. And tomatoes and cherry tomatoes especially are one of my favorite things to grow uh, in the garden. But these little girls have grown up and enjoyed their full summer in the kitchen garden and it's time for them to come out. So we've been enjoying harvest from these plants since July and um, and now they've kind of slowed down their production. Last year I let these girls stay in the garden all the way until the first frost and looking back in photos and things I really regretted it because starting right about now until mid-October they just don't look that great and they definitely slowed their production. So let's talk about the first few steps to do as you want to pull out when you want to pull out your fruiting plants from your warm season in the kitchen garden. So what I did first uh, is the other day, actually just yesterday, I came in with uh, my big Lake Crusette bowl and just harvested a ton of green tomatoes off of the vine. Now, some of these might actually ripen indoors. Um, some of them may not. I'm just gonna experiment. I'll put them out, not stacked like this because they'll end up rotting, but I'm gonna put them out maybe on a windowsill or somewhere indoors and see how many will ripen. So that's the first step is try to get as much of the green uh, tomatoes off the vine as possible. So I left a few. The way I like to cut them is just to cut the whole truss rather than just, you know, each tomato on its own. So I just kind of come in here to the fruiting truss and just cut the whole thing. As you can see, these still have a good long time to ripen. If you haven't seen our video about how long it takes for a tomato to ripen on the vine, uh, it takes about the same amount of time that it took the plant to grow in the first place. So these still have a good amount of time to finish up. And as you can see, the vines down here are just kind of scraggly and not so great. So what I'm gonna do, I have these nice uh, strong pruners. I can prune off separate vines like this. Um, but the next step is actually, I'm gonna cut the plants right at the base of the soil line. So I try to do this when possible. I try to practice the no dig method and try to maintain the, the web that is um, underneath the ground. So a lot of times if I can manage it, I try not to uproot an entire plant, but instead just cut it right at the base of the soil so that whatever's going on underneath um, can stay the same. Cause even though we can't see it, there's a whole lot of life and stuff going on down there. So we're just gonna cut right here at the base of the soil level. You can see that leaves the stem in there and you can see the, if I just spread out, you can see the roots. But that releases the plant from the soil level and that's the next step. So we'll do that on all the plants is cut it right at the base of the soil. All right, so we'll cut this one too, right at the base. All right, and we got one more right here. This one is a beast. Look how thick that is. So you can see I didn't quite keep to my rule of keeping it to one main stem, but at least it's only two. But that one was so nice and thick. Look at that. All right, so that's step two is cut them from the base. So now we'll move on to the next step. All right, now what I'm gonna do, the next step is I'm actually gonna cut them here in the middle. What I found over the years is that if I try to pull out the whole vine in one piece, it's way too much to handle. So way back when, if you watched our videos, there was a time we were tying the plants to the trellis with twine. That feels like ages ago now. Um, but I'm just gonna cut in the midway 
and start to pull these out. So there's the start. And then if you see some green tomatoes that you want to keep, you can always grab them off the vine. And uh, there's that. So we got that side. I can't tell you, it kind of feels really good to do this, it's like kind of therapeutic. I just finished Marie Kondo training to become a KonMari consultant. And I was reminded of her philosophy that you discard first. So anytime you're wanting to do something or make a change, the first thing you gotta do is get rid of the old stuff. So, um, so we'll do the second step over here too, which is to cut in the middle of the plant. Again, there's twine here from way back in the beginning of June. So fun to remember those days when these little plants were so small and young and we had no idea what would happen to the plants. Kind of fun to remember the full season of growth. All right, so we did that. This one is actually more on that side of the trellis. So I'm gonna pull this one off. Got a few more green tomatoes here. What do you guys think? Are the green tomatoes gonna ripen indoors? I'm not sure. I've been getting so many of you guys on Instagram when I told you I was gonna pull out my tomatoes, telling me all the recipes, green tomato relish, fried green tomatoes, green tomato salsa. I'm like, do you guys think I cook or something? Are all crazy? Um, even my mom's sending me green tomato recipes. So no one wants these to go to waste. I can tell that. Um, all right, let's see. We're almost done with this step. As you can see, sometimes it takes, almost feels like it takes as long to get rid of uh, what you grew as it did to grow it in the first place. All right, so that's step two. I'm gonna finish up and then we'll do the final step. Here we go. This one's really, um, this one I think might have been the most productive plant. Look at that. Even, this is the sun gold. And I think it got the most amount of sun. Um, you can just tell how, look at how thick that main stem is. It's such a sign of health uh, for a tomato plant. So definitely enjoy growing that one this year. All right. So that is step, what step are we on? Two, three. So first harvest the green tomatoes, then cut at the base, then cut in the middle. And now we're gonna do the hard work. We're gonna cut right at the top and try not to get hit in the face <laughs> with tomato juice, which I just did. And uh, here we go. Let's see. This is gonna be so sad to, uh, to take all this off. So I have to say last year, I let a first snow, we had a snow in October, an early snow, and that's what killed all these plants because I left them in for too long. And I really regretted that because it was so gross. The plants were just so destroyed by the snow that it actually wasn't it wasn't easy or fun to take it out. Not that this is necessarily fun, but this is definitely more enjoyable and I'm not freezing. So, all right, we're almost there. So I'm gonna go lift through here. Once the, um, once the tomatoes got up here, I wasn't really tying them anymore. So you can see they're not really attached. They're just, oh, actually I take that back. That one I did tie. All right, here we go. One half off. It's half, the trellis is like, oh my gosh, I'm bare, cover me up. Um, so you can see I still have a good bit of green tomatoes that I didn't quite get off. Um, so I can just go through here and clean them off, no biggie. And we've got a couple, here's a little bit of twine. It's really fun to remember, I think this was probably I'll have to look back at the videos, but I think this was probably mid-July when, um, when the plants were right about this point. So it's fun to look back and think through like what we were doing as a family and 
uh, what was going on at the time when the plants were reaching each of those spots. One of the neat things I love about the kitchen garden plants is that because they're so dynamic, you can really, you know, remember things you were doing and activities and life changes with your plants because um, you're literally changing day after day. All right. Oh my gosh. My little lovely trellis is bare. Um, one more, one little trick that I do with the twine is I don't tie it in a knot, I just tie it in a bow. And then you can untie it pretty easily. All right, friends, we've done it. What do you think? It's kind of sad, isn't it? It's the closing of a season and the beginning of a new one, which is um, kind of bittersweet, but exciting at the same time. All right, let's check out all the stuff we just pulled out of here. You ready? Oh my gosh, this is crazy. So all this grew from four plants and uh, this doesn't include all the fruit that we've pulled off these plants and all the leaves and things I've pruned off over the last four months. So pretty incredible what can happen from just four little seeds if you think about it. This all came from four tiny cherry tomato seeds. So awesome. All right, thanks for watching Gardenary. I hope this inspires you to enjoy the magic of the kitchen garden every single season. Uh, make sure you take the green thumb quiz at gardenary.com quiz. The link is below this video. We're gonna ask you just a few simple questions and we'll help you figure out where you are in your gardening journey. And then we'll give you some awesome resources to help you grow to the next level. Now, if you'll excuse me, I gotta go deal with something. See you later. Thanks for watching Gardenary.